Climate change is more and more apparent, even though it may not seem like it on a cold, rainy day like today. But even places like Walden Pond here in Concord, Massachusetts, are being affected by climate change. And I'm here to talk to Charles Davis, a biology professor at Harvard, about how climate change is affecting our own backyards. So climate change is a, a big issue, and most of the time when I think of climate change, and most people think of climate change, they think of like the ice caps and the deserts. But we're here at Walden Pond in Concord in the rain in November to talk about how it's a little warmer, which doesn't feel today. But <laughs> yeah, you, you look at how things have gotten a little warmer here, and you can see the effect of climate change a few miles outside of Boston. Right, so um, it's, 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 it's warmer on average and, and wetter on average, but, uh, but it, in general what we've seen over the last um, 150 years is that there's been a, a steady and dramatic rise in mean annual temperatures. And, and what we found, in fact, is that um, you know, um, some species in this area are responding favorably and other species are not. You've actually been looking at this and looking at data that was taken by Henry David Thoreau and then new stuff and seeing how it's changed over the 150 years? Right, so we have this incredible data set that spans 150 years that, that gives us information about how um, organisms appear to have responded to climate change. And the data set was actually initiated by Henry David Thoreau, and what we're seeing is that climate change has had a dramatic effect on plant species in this general area, species that Thoreau knew and loved well, and um, many of them have actually um, been locally extirpated from the area. There are species that Thoreau saw um, that you can no longer see here today. And we think the strongest explanation for why we see those changes or why we see that pattern of loss is because of climate change. So you've actually looked at the stuff that he wrote down and have then taken your own observations and looked at how it's changed. Right, so in collaboration with uh, Boss, uh, Richard Primack over at Boston University, we've been able to uh, take data from Thoreau's journals on things like flowering time and it turns out that there have been subsequent botanists that have recorded similar data uh, over the last 150 years. So we have this series of incredible snapshots in the way in which the, the flora has changed in, in Concord. And what we found is that, um, is that the strongest associations are with increasing mean annual temperature. And on average, the community of plants in this area now flower about eight days earlier today than they did during the time and throw about 150 years ago. So over that time, it's gotten, what, like five or six degrees Fahrenheit warmer, and spring has gotten a week or so earlier. Exactly. So we see this, this strong pattern of what's called spring creep, right? So now um, things on average are flowering um, or initiating, getting started during the spring um, much earlier than they were during the time of, of Thoreau. And this is really one of the, um, the strongest ways in which we think organisms will respond to climate change. That is to say that you know, the way in which organisms key or change their annual life cycles, whether it be producing flowers or um, birds arriving into this part of the country, there's been this dramatic s shift to be earlier in the year. But the important thing to keep in mind is that not all species are responding similarly. Some species are exhibiting dramatic shifts um, earlier in the season, and other species are, you know, continuing to, for example, flower like clock clockwork every year. So this this pattern is not caused by, you know, it being so much hotter here that the plant can't grow, or so much wetter or drier here that the plant can't survive. It's just messing with the biological clock a little bit, right? Right. So so they've they've shift. They seem. Um, S several species seem to have shifted um, in line with increasing temperatures, but others have not, and those that have not shifted um, are in, have been sort of hit the hardest. They're in the strongest uh, decline, and it may be that what's happening is that those species that are not shifting are missing their insect visitors, their insect pollinators, um, and, and so um, that can have a dramatic effect on species fitness and, and maybe causing the declines we're seeing. And you've actually been able to find a, a pattern. It's not just that that climate change is random and affect, or affects everything the same. You found that, that there are certain types of plants and plants from certain places that are affected more than others. Right, exactly. It seems that there's a strong effect based on um, overall evolutionary relations. So in other words, if, um, if you're a plant that's in decline, on average you tend to be closely related to another species in decline. And what that does is it puts a much finer pattern or point on the way in which climate change is affecting this community. It's not random or uniform. And um, from there, what we can do is develop much better um, predictive sort of models and conservation and management strategies for how to um, better tackle this problem. And so that, 
you know, develops a much better predictive framework for thinking about, um, you know, the way in which species will continue to decline in this area in the future. Well, it is uh, really interesting to know that you can learn that much from looking at a, an area this small. Thank you very much for telling me yeah, about it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks.